everyone. I want to thank you for coming today and giving me your attention for these precious five minutes. I know we've all spoken a lot about Ben and Jerry's, but so hopefully I give you some new interesting facts about them. I will be speaking about the responsibility to the general public, and there are four. Public health issues, what Ben and Jerry did for the health of the public. Ice cream is very fattening, as we all know, but they did still try by coming out with ice cream light, which actually actually wasn't that good. So they actually came out with low-fat yogurt, which was very popular, especially when it hit pints. They were number one in super premium yogurt. The next thing that we actually don't think about is Ben and Jerry said no to GMO and RBGH. Now I know what GMO is, which is genetic material that has been artificially manip manipulated, but what the heck is RBGH? It's an actually genetically engineered hormone given to cows to make them produce more milk. <laughs> Worse. Sorry. Protecting the environment. What does an ice cream company have to do with the environment? You, sir. Yes. Do you like Mother Earth? Sure do. <laughs> Me too. You? Like you? Awesome. That's what I like to hear because we <laughs> all walk on this earth and so do Ben and Jerry. So they came, at, they came uh, to a problem at the water beef plant, which was their waste problem, which they came up with the idea of reclaim to fame by giving the reclaim to pigs. Sadly, it killed the pigs, but it <laughs> helped them with their tariffs along the way. Um, a new thing that they're doing is climate justice, which you can actually see with this picture right here, which is the Save Our World pint of ice cream, which is marshmallows out there. <laughs> and uh, their goal is for international leaders to work together to have 100% clean energy by 2050. Great idea. I believe it was Buddha or Gandhi or someone very important in Indian that said, uh, it's not what you can do later, it's what you can do now that counts. Um, they, they also prioritize natural ingredients that come from family uh, farmers and smallholder producers using agricultural practices that save the earth. Developing the quality of the workforce. They had an issue with this, they did. They, they were so rapid in their growth with two guys that didn't know what they were doing um, they created some problems, especially lack of communication, because they were growing fast, especially with two, uh, two plants. Um, so what they did was they held uh, meetings with where employees could actually give their own opinions on the business. So you're actually talking, talking to the two guys that own this company and say, hey, this really sucks. Please fix it. Uh, another thing is group work. People would actually get in groups, figure out, hey, I didn't like this, let's let's work on this, and that was a great idea. The Daily Plant was a journal or a newspaper that had quirky information that people actually wanted to read in order to get uh, information out through the company. It was very it was very well used. Um, management. No one wanted to be the CEO. No one wanted to be the president. You want to be part of a company that no one wants to own. I really wouldn't. I love the values, but I want someone to, to take the leader role because without a leader, things fall apart. Uh, so they did go through management retreats, which did help a lot, caused a few problems, but it did help in order to create communication within the, the management section of the company. This is an actual quote from the book that I highlighted that I thought was very interesting. Most of our employees felt working for Ben & Jerry's was by far the best job they ever had. I know a lot of us aren't lucky enough to be able to say something, especially if you can work at Taco Bell or McDonald's and you're cleaning toilets or something. The next one, corporate philanthropy. This was huge in Ben and Jerry's. This is what they built off of. They wanted to give to the public. Uh, so Ben and Jerry's created the Ben and Jerry's Foundation, especially Ben. He gave 50,000 of his own stock to this Ben and Jerry's Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization. They give 7.5 pre-tax profit, pre-tax to nonprofit organizations via grants. Now, they don't do this today. They actually give an annual allocation, adjusted upward annually, based on how much ice cream they sell, which actually is a great idea. Don't be sad that they got rid of the 7.5% because this is an actual motivation to push that ice cream out there. Let's sell this and give the Ben & Jerry's Foundation more money. In 2014, they gave $2,600,000. Mm -hmm. 
That's a lot of money. Uh, and don't forget about all the free ice cream they gave. It's like Ben and Jerry's were just throwing this at the people, actually, literally, off of the interstate in California. Conclusion. I do believe Ben and Jerry's did uphold their social responsibilities in all four issues. Uh, ice cream is a very unhealthy product. I don't believe they had to do anything for the health issue part, but they, they took initiative and they did help people who were health conscious at the time because there was a low-fat fad in the late 1980s. Too bad it was still high in sugar and people were getting fatter and not want to not knowing why. It's low fat. <laughs> Look, I'm eating Ben and Jerry's every day. B&J was and still passionate about our earth and continue to look out for it even to this day. Workforce quality has always been an issue, but B&J took measures to sort them out. Today, B&J's is no ordinary corporation. It's still very funky and lively and you can see that in their website. Philanthropy, in my opinion, was what they were most successful at. It is the easiest thing to do by giving money, but I mean, Ben went too far, almost went too far by, uh, he almost brought down the company with his, all his crazy, kooky ideas. Questions? Ask questions that you want me to ask you. I need to. <laughs> I guess if they just want to vote again. <laughs> Anything about social responsibilities or workforce? What about their health issues? I did a lot of research on four, on all four. Is there any idea what the people in the to make are uh, according to my dad? How what percentage of people are spending on that? I'm sorry? Like you said, in 2014 they donated to yeah. millions of 10,000. Do you have any idea what percentage of their income that was? That's a good question. It is a good question, and I do not know, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that one. Yeah, so the two million six hundred was uh, they didn't they don't on the website they do not give a percentage of the allocation of ice cream that they sell mm -hmm. on the website. They're very vague on their website. They they kind of it's kind of very very elementary. There's no statistics, and I did read their financial reviews. I didn't go that far. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? But it's still a lot. It's still a lot. It's, it's a lot more than a lot of companies give to, uh, to Earth. Of course, yes. Uh, what do you think was their most effective philanthropic event program? The most effective one? The most, what, what did the most philanthropy? Because you said you thought that was their most successful area. So what really other programs would you think was okay. the best? Uh, out of all their programs, um, I believe the Ben and Jerry's Foundation was the most successful a lot of people don't know about it though, but so I believe their the marketing technique of giving away free ice cream, especially stuff like Mother's Day, the random things that they did was the most important that gave off what kind of people Ben and Jerry's was. Any other questions? I don't I can do more than you do. Okay. Did you see anything about people actually complaining about working on Ben and Jerry's? It's actually in the book. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe in the values of the company, but still were very um, happy to be with a company that would be transparent and would uh, present their values to the employees. But and I'm sure there's 24 of us in here, I'm sure we all don't agree on every single value that Ben & Jerry's has. So although there's no concrete evidence in the books, I feel like I've read the book three times. <laughs> From reading it the first time, going through all my highlights, and getting ready for this presentation. Any other questions, Professor Ross? Well, I've got lots. No, I'm good. I'm good. Throw them at me. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank, Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.